24 wins in a row and they even seem to enjoy losing to me. Welcome back fellow fans of Clash Royale, or if it is your first time here, thank you so much for stopping by Galadon Gaming. Yes, we've got 24 wins in a row, or should I say we did, using this deck, the Gala, I don't know what you want to call it, Log Bait deck. I am just, maybe, I fear getting too accustomed to this deck. It seems to be working. I still see a few top players using this exact deck and other very similar iterations. So with balance changes and new cards coming in, obviously the Night Witch is going to shake things up, especially as she's just been released. But this deck has been having a lot of success against a wide variety of decks, uh, even Lava Hound, Graveyard, and Golem decks. So we'll see how it holds up against the Night Witch. But right here, obviously, Season Reset made the first 10 or 15 wins not that difficult because you're getting reset down to a lower trophy level but that's why i specifically wanted to show you some of the higher level battles because i am still having success with this deck right now and some familiar faces are showing up in my battle log so first of all gandalf from bernie or bust i believe i faced gandalf before maybe way back in the day in the early days of clash royale he is always up there and i keep on running into him and uh, honestly, I, I don't recall whether I win or lose most of the time. I just assume that I lose to most of these guys. But uh, with Gandalf here, he's just not able to counter that Goblin Barrel on the right-hand side. And it's really all about timing. You know, they called this a, it used to be Zap Bait, definitely a Log Bait style deck. It's all about waiting for your opponent or forcing your opponent to use the log in another counter. The Princess and the Goblin Gang, such great cards for almost forcing your opponent to drop the log or suffer the consequences. Here, Gandalf chooses not to drop the log on the right-hand side, and the Princess almost single-handedly finishes off that tower. He tries to put together a big push instead, but... We've got the Inferno Tower, Goblin Gang, the Knight, and another Princess now doing a great job. And now with my Log on the right-hand side, Tower down to 47 hit points. So in an ideal world, I realize that, and I don't put any more troops down the right-hand side like this Goblin Gang. But there goes the Tower. So ideally, getting a Tower down to under a spell, under, say, a Log, and then working on the opposite Tower works out really well for me just because I don't have to deal with the King's Tower firing at me. In this case, I had a pretty good advantage. I was thinking that there was no way he would get this left tower down. Final 10 seconds, looking good, but the minion horde is in there. I've got no counter, I do lose the tower, and now it's back to the drawing board with only a 700 hit point lead. We've gone into overtime, of course he's got that evil middle deployment to use with the Royal Giant. Luckily, the Princess right there working really well. The Knight in behind the Royal Giant. We are going to suffer some damage, but another Goblin Barrel working out, grabbing another six or 700 in damage off that left tower. We're almost down to a rocket log situation. Time is running down, though. It's getting short. 35 seconds left. Left-hand side, Goblin Gang moving in. Princess, there goes the log. That's going to take it down to under 800. Not quite a rocket. Got to defend down the center one more time, dropping the rocket, and then it's just a matter of rotating back again to the log in the final 15 seconds. Looks like the right tower is going to be safe. Here comes the log, and yes, the win and the thumbs up from my friend Gandalf. So we took down the White Wizard, and we picked up another few trophies on our way up towards who knows where this season, trying to push towards 5,800 or 6,000 but we'll see how far this deck takes me. Now for this next battle, we faced Nick Cannon YT, and no, it's not Mariah Carey's husband. Uh, that is her husband, right? But anyway, uh, it, it turns out Nick Cannon, not only a YouTuber, but a streamer, and he was live on Twitch right here, pushing for 5,000 trophies with his level 12 account. So he was pushing his way up, 
And uh, here's his YouTube channel. If you guys want to check him out, I actually went over to his live stream right after this because he tweeted me and said, Oh, thanks a lot, Galadon. You ruined my chances of getting to 5,000 trophies in front of my Twitch audience. So I went over there and checked him out. And he's actually a skilled player and a good entertainer. I enjoyed watching his stream. So if you guys get a chance, make sure you check him out. There's so many up-and-coming streamers and YouTubers in the Clash of Clans and Clash Royale communities always good to see more we always need more good content creators so nick doing a good job of course I, I do have the advantage of level 13. now he's got a few maxed out cards here but i've got well the entire deck maxed out and that is going to give me a bit of an advantage now you know lots of people have yt in their name you never know if they've got 12 subscribers or 1.2 million and the last thing I really expected was to see somebody live streaming while I was battling. So I do feel sort of bad, but you know, it's one of those situations where it's, I mean, come on, sorry, not sorry. It was a good battle though. And as you can see, working that log bait one more time. Now he's got the golem deck and usually I will try to turn and push down the opposite lane as soon as my opponent drops a golem. But right here, just trying to keep the pressure on, I saw the Elixir Collector, so I kind of figured usually that means three Musketeers. Uh, that's the most likely card combination. And then maybe second is the Golem, third might be the Lava Hound. In comes the Lumberjack, Knight, Ice Spirit going to intercept the Lumberjack. We are down to double Elixir Goblin Gang getting there, half of it anyway. The Stabby, the Shank Goblins get there. Tower down to 1144. So just trying to hold him off, dropping the Inferno Tower for the Dragon. Maybe not the greatest idea as the Golem goes down, but there is the Tower. Because as he went Elixir poor with the Golem drop, I threw in that Goblin Barrel and we grabbed the Tower. Now I am pushing left Tower just in case, just in case he comes back. Final 30 seconds, Inferno Towers all over the place. Double Inferno Towers, double Golem, so they were much needed. Check out the left side though, that Princess doing a good job on the tower. Golems on their way, looks like they might get there, but we're down at the final 15 seconds. Another Lumberjack goes down, I'm going to throw a Goblin Barrel off that left tower just in case, but it looks like we've held him off the right tower. Things are going to be okay, final 3 seconds. And, okay, that maybe was a little bit BM, and I apologize. Uh, my apologies to Nick Cannon for that BM rocket right at the end. But good game, and uh, he was a really good sport. I hope that I can be that good of a sport when I lose on my live stream to another content creator. All right, speaking of content creators, I think this might be the clan of Boot Tramp. Good friend of mine, who, of course, I've lost to a few times. But this was also win number 24 in a row with this deck. Now, I will tell you guys, I am against playing with only one deck all of the time. Because if you get too set in your ways, you're not going to be able to adjust to a significant balance change or a change in the meta with the addition of new cards. You always need to be ready just in case one of the anchor cards of your deck gets either a direct nerf from a balancing change or an indirect nerf through the addition of new cards, like the Night Witch. You never know where this deck is headed. Also, if a deck gets too dominant, gets used too much, you will see people developing counter decks to it that just annihilate you. So for now, this deck works well this season. Will it work next season? I don't know. And I actually already fear that I've played this deck way too much and I need to try to learn something else. So you know what, you guys, I'm always happy to take input from the viewers. Let me know, Galafam, what is the deck you think I should be pushing with over this next season? Keep in mind, not real good with the Lava Hound, and I have yet to master the Golem, but maybe it is about that time to just break down and learn how to play some of these other decks that are significantly different. There's something about the certain type of personality you have for playing a super high elixir deck that has the big tank cards in it, like the Golem and the Lava Hound. I don't know, maybe I'm just not patient enough. Maybe I drink too much caffeine. I don't know what it is, but for some reason when I play those decks, I always seem to get caught with my elixir down and I don't have any way to counter whatever push the opponent has put together. So always again, willing to take input, willing to take constructive criticism 
Uh, Galadon, you're trash, by the way, is not constructive criticism. Just to let you know, I'm not sure. Sometimes I think maybe the people in YouTube comments think that is, but it doesn't really help me out. I'm just, just going to put that out there. All right, so this player using a very familiar Hog Cycle deck. This is a deck I actually haven't seen as much of lately. And yes, Dirty Rocket right there. Not ideal. I probably should have rocketed the archers now that I look at this replay instead of the cannon. I didn't have any units pushing. No reason to get that cannon out of the way. Of course, the ice spirits do a great job of freezing the night and getting those archers out of the way. Another push. The hog rider in there. The goblin gang working out well because there was no zap. Fireball is too late. Now, I am behind right here, but check it out. The goblin barrel gets there, gets the tower down to 757. And because we know our numbers, we know the log does 140, the rocket does 717, and that is game over. So 24 wins in a row, you guys, worked out pretty well. How far will go this season? Well, it just yet remains to be seen. Thank you guys, though, as always, for your input, for your constructive criticism, and for being Galafam members, for checking me out on Beam, now called Mixer.com, but you can still get there with that same URL, be sure to subscribe and turn notifications on for early update and sneak peek information. Thank you guys again. See you tomorrow. Full attack. Full attack. Full attack. Gallagher. More like full cringe.